All right, this morning we're going to have a fast video. If you uh, get a chance to see Jason Horner speak, and you can see his Twitter handle there. I don't list every single thing because it would get long, but but from his Twitter, I'm sure you can get to his site and his LinkedIn and everything. I um, highly recommend uh, seeing him speak. It was a really good presentation on data warehouse design. Good question, as well as good discussion. Um, fully agree with all the whole idea of think about design from the beginning. I mean, that's, that's so important, especially think and scale, because... There are there are numerous times I think we've all run into where uh, someone's like, oh, it's this this will work for now, and it's okay. Well, what happens when it stops working? And and it can take a lot more work to to redesign something. Well, uh, there was really good emphasis on good design as it's less work to correct later down the architecture side later down the road. Um, we're thinking about dimensions and fact tables on their own schema. There was an individual there who said that he put. Uh, uh, dimensions and fact tables on their own schema individually, which I thought was really fascinating. I was like, I, you know, I've never thought about doing that. Usually, it's like you know, dim, and you have the the table name, and then it's fact the the uh, the table name, and that's I've seen that a lot. But it's interesting to to put it on its own schema. People use schemas differently. I've seen them used for, you know, we want to replicate these five tables on you know the same database on different schemas. I've seen people. Uh, use uh, schemas for permissions. I've seen people use schemas for organization. Um, that's an also interesting approach to to organize the, the dimension and fact tables by schema. And I also like the idea, one of the things he mentioned was using a staging database for initial ETL. Fully agree. I like to, um, I use more of the database and the table structure to scale data. And the reason is because um, for instance, I'll give you a great example. So when I look at, let's say, I store commodity data and I look at uh, cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies are always online, right? They're always active. Uh, commodities, not so much. There are load times with commodities. And uh, I've worked with a lot of energy clients and they do those load times as well. So I know, yeah, that's a pretty standard approach to, to more of your energy slash commodities. Whereas with cryptocurrencies, it's regular. Well, if you think about an API-based versus a file-based, or think of it as a timed load versus an ongoing, well, the ongoing is more OLTP, right? Whereas the timed base is more OLAP, right? It's more, I can just do these timed loads. So I like to kind of separate those out. But the idea of having a staging database, if you, if you don't use one and you're importing more and more data, I definitely would consider that because you really don't want to have to have reports being run on the same database where a lot of connections are being made to clean and scrub data. It's going to become a mess in the long run as those data volume grow. So again, if you have a chance to uh, to see Jason Horner, highly recommend. It was a great presentation. Uh, he spoke here in North Texas. And then, of course, uh, he is on Twitter at Jason Horner. At least that looks like him. No, I'm just kidding. No, that's him.